Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful morning here uh, out in Minnesota. Uh, we are on the Slavic farm on the area that we demo coatings out and stuff like that. Um, this is the Ask a Painter live show. I am Nick Slavic. I am the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It is a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over uh, three, <laughs> almost three decades now of experience uh, to answer any questions you have. And again, I don't have all the questions, but the people associated with this group, uh, the community that's involved with it is some of the best and brightest in the industry. And we, we can find all the answers for you that you want. So um, flew in late last night uh, from Pennsylvania. Uh, we will give a full recap of that a little bit later. But I am here today uh, to talk about the latest offering from Sherwin-Williams. Uh, full demo, full review, everything of Sherwin-Williams Latitudes. Uh, before we get into that, before we get into the review of the, uh, or of the uh, Pennsylvania Master's classes, um, I will mention the PCA, the Painting Contractors Association. So the, um, there's many events throughout the year. Last year, a lot of those events got canceled because of a global pandemic, but uh, this year they are back. So I will say that there are my master's classes. If you want a master's class in your area, if you want to attend one of the ones scheduled, go to the PCA's website and just type in Nick Slavic PCA or Nick Slavic PCA master's classes. You'll find them all there. Um, there are many big events from the PCA, the Painting Contractors Association. The flagship event is the Expo, the Exposition. Uh, that's probably going to be late February in Orlando. Uh, the specific dates are actually on the PCA's website. That's the big one, folks. You know, uh, possibly a thousand people in one area, vendors, uh, member-driven content, presentations, award ceremonies, huge dinners, uh, networking, things like that. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. There's other smaller events, and by small, I not mean tiny. There's a, there's a great grouping of contractors, maybe 50 to 100 contractors at a, at a time. They're called forums. So there is a residential forum, there is a craftsmanship forum, and there is a commercial forum. So the residential forum is actually coming up in August in San Antonio. So that's kind of the restarting of a lot of these um, of these events. And I am going to send Estimator Andy to that one, actually. I'll actually be on a family vacation. Otherwise, I would absolutely be there. Uh, Jason Paris and his crew are going to be there too, so uh, I would not miss this if I were you. It's a great group of contractors. We go deep into the business side of residential contracting, and it's some of the best and brightest there, and it's member-driven content, which is really, really cool. So that's coming up in August. You can search for that, uh, the PCA Residential Forum. There's the Commercial Forum, the Craftsmanship Forum, events on the way, um, but the Expo is going to be the big thing. So keep looking at the PCA's website for more events like that. Uh, we have something called Overdrive as well, which is basically the Netflix of painting content. You know, people like Jason Paris, Noah Cantor, Zach Kenny, all the people you know and love from the industry, the big thinkers, are on there with content, searchable, organized, all that other stuff. Um, if you want to be a member of the PCA, I have a link here. Again, I will say this again, if you pay your membership dues, you will probably not be a better painter or business owner just because of that. If you pay your membership dues and then interact with all the content, consume it, digest it, adapt it for your company, and then talk to all the painters and business owners in the PCA, that's where you get supercharged. So that is my challenge to you guys. Uh, I was in Pennsylvania yesterday and a couple people had just signed up for the PCA and the PCA is kind of the door that got cracked open and they looked inside the PCA and not only did they see the content, the free standards, the estimating guide, but they saw the people involved with it too. Their, their minds were a little bit open to that sort of thing. So <laughs> that's awesome. Ah, thank you so much, Aid. Uh, I do appreciate that. So, all right, folks, we're going to talk about Sherwin Williams Latitude. I'm going to give you a quick demo, and then we're going to do a recap of the Pennsylvania Masters classes. Now, we're talking about exterior paint. I'm going to give you some deep impressions overlaid on my almost 30 years of experience painting, uh, how we use this tool. We're going to talk about Pennsylvania, but always, guys, you can ask any question you guys want. Anything you've ever wanted to know, what primer for my cabinets, what brush do you use for this, what sprayer tip, job costing, whatever else. So let's hop in to this, the reason we're here on the show today. This is a perfect day to talk about this particular paint. You guys are starting to see this in the stores. It's starting to circulate around. I'm here to give you a little impression through my filter. So what do you need to know about Sherwin-Williams Latitude? Number one, uh, it helps you out in those um, extreme temperature and moisture situations. So 
What we don't want to happen as exterior painters is have a variable outcome to a standard process. So in Minnesota, we run into a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we get a little mix of everywhere in the country. It gets super cold, it gets super hot, it gets super dry, it gets super humid. And sometimes that cocktail gets shaken up and we get thrown some odd stuff all over there. So today is a perfect day. Uh, because it is 61 degrees right now and the dew point is 53 degrees. Uh, we'll get into more of that later, but it's still, there's no wind, the temperature's rising. This is a morning where if you were to over apply some uh, inferior exterior paint, you could get into some um, uh, surfactant leaching, you could get into some drying issues, you could get into uh, dirt getting up on it, uh, the moisture uh, that's leaving now, there's in the low areas, there's still some fog here. So this paint operates 35 to 120. You're really gonna see the benefit of this in the low, low and the high, high. That band from like 35 to 45 and any of that stuff that goes 80, 90 degrees plus like that. Um, the biggest thing that you need to know about this is the smoothness that it glides onto a house. Also the moisture resistance. The moisture resistance is a big, big thing, especially in a day like this. This is tailor made for a product just like this. Um, data plus feelings, right? We always deal with the data and the feelings. The data on this product is, it says smooth all over the literature. It says it on the TDS, it says it on the product literature, it says it on the website. That's the piece of data. The feelings is, it's insanely smooth. <laughs> uh, for those of us, uh, years ago, uh, back in the you know 80s and 90s, we had to kind of doctor up our paints a little bit when we were outside, especially in the years where I only hand brushed houses. We had to put in extenders and additives and thinners and things like that to kind of make it do what we want to do so it doesn't dry too fast or we want it to dry faster. And when you put in these extenders and additives, it almost like lubricated the paint. You know what I mean? It just went on so much smoother there. Uh, and this paint, without any doctoring, you crack the lid, it reminds me of that beautifully applied paint, that lubricated paint that works its way into the pores. It is super smooth. The interesting thing is too, is um, whatever is in here makes it dry very effectively at these weird temperatures. Today, again, is the perfect example. It is 61 degrees, it is dead still. You can hear the birds, you can hear the crickets, you can hear the frogs here. There is no air movement at all. And if you're on a shaded side of the house, the north side, and, and you have some tree cover and things like that, you could run into a lot of drying issues. Once in my life, I have um, experienced uh, problems with paint drying like that, where it was very, it was probably in the 40s, still day, the temperature wasn't moving, no air movement. I hand brushed an entire house myself in that day. By the time I got around to the front again, that front side was still wet and there was adhesion issues with that paint. This paint, even in this condition right here, dries very quickly and effectively. So that obviously aids in the dirt pickup. You know, if some wind picks up, if you're moving drop cloths, it's, you're not gonna get that, uh, you know, just contamination from the environment in there. Also, moisture resistance is huge. Now, when we talk about moisture resistance, it can be a lot of things. It can be rain or it could be dew. Um, dew is one of the most um, obnoxious things because it can be a beautiful sunny day and we can have major dew issues everywhere. Rain is pretty easy. It clouds over, you maybe hear some thunder and it rains, we can kind of see that. But some of these days are a little bit ominous where the dew can fall, the dew can lift, Sometimes in these evenings where the temp drops out, where we have a, a, a climate change, where we have there's, you know, a, a storm front moves in or something, the temp can drop out, you can get some heavy dew. Sometimes dew stays around till noon or one o'clock if it's a still day. This has insanely good resistant uh, to that moisture. So it does have climate flex technology. So all these things I've just laid over, the climate flex technology is basically that stuff. That's Sherwin's way of saying that this is something different than what we normally get in these paints. So, <laughs> all right, so I will, uh, I will get to these questions a little bit later here, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get through some of this stuff. So basically the general idea of this paint is premium paint, very good paint. This, so we use a lot of emerald, we use a lot of duration, resilience, all that other stuff. It, it has all the things you know and love of that. It's just an awesome coating, but it also gives you that little extra tool, that little extra advantage uh, for the extremes, the high highs, the low lows, and that moisture stuff, which is a really, really good thing. So you can avoid weather delays and it's gonna extend your season a little bit. And you know, people think, well, hey, in Minnesota, it's pretty easy to delineate those seasons. We get six months inside, six months outside. But you know, my friends down in like Arizona, Texas, things like that, um, 
you need to extend that season as well because there's a whole hot, dry craziness in the middle of summer too that sometimes guys just shut down and do interior work. So you can start bumping into there if those surface temps and the air temps aren't above a certain uh, temperature, you can still be painting in that area. And with this paint, it's, the, the interesting thing is we focus in Minnesota on the low end of that spectrum there because we're not going to get some crazy temperatures, although we do get you know triple digit temps and stuff. But especially you guys along that southern, uh, uh, southwest and stuff like that's where it's hot and dry. I think you'll particularly feel the benefits of a paint like this because it just goes on super smooth. It dries at a good rate. Um, in, in the low temperatures, it's formulated to dry fairly quack, quick. In the higher temperatures, it gives you that extended time uh, to work with. And so you're not rushing, rushing, rushing. So it doesn't, um, you know, sometimes when it's too hot and too dry, uh, when you spray a paint or something like that, it gets a little gravelly because the overspray doesn't have time to go on and sort of coagulate and 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 uh, you know form a, form a film with the other stuff. It gets a little sandy, a little gravelly, and this will definitely help you with that in my experience like that. So, um, 35 degrees to 45 degrees. That's one of the bands that I'm of temperature that I'm most interested in. Uh, it will dry to the touch in two hours based on the data sheet. My experience, again, there's data plus feelings. The data sheet says that. The data sheet is not wrong. It's almost never wrong. Uh, the feelings is it dries much quicker than that. My experience in the field is that, you know, especially on a day like this, this is tailor-made to test uh, a paint like this. It should not be drying. It should stay wet for many hours, and it is drying very quickly uh, when, when we do the demos out here. The interesting thing is 45 degree, uh, uh, when you get in that low band at 35 to 45 degrees, you can put it on, it dries fairly quickly, but remember that temperature, uh, that low temperature is going to slow down the drying of that paint. So when you're in that 35 to 45 degree band, when we're talking the extreme shoulder seasons in the upper, uh, in the upper part of the country, you do have to wait 24 hours between coats to do that because you want proper adhesion. The things in this paint that make it beneficial for all those things also you have to give it that time to cure so that that second coat uh, will adhere to it like that. Now, but everything over 45 degrees and all the way up to the upper end, it's the same thing we all know and love, which is, you know, the two hour dry time, my experience much less, and then a four hour recoat time like that. Just uh, what we all know and love and expect uh, from all our favorite Sherwin-Williams products. So, um, my impressions. If I had to describe it, smooth. <laughs> it is insanely smooth. And I picked this substrate right here because this is a this is a fairly well intact sort of substrate that's ready for another coat of paint. It fills the little pores, cracks, and fissures insanely well, insanely well. Um, there's a lot of our exterior paints that are awesome paints, but they're thick and bold and robust, and they don't necessarily automatically work themselves into those things. We have to really go at it intentionally with a brush or a roller to get it in there. This stuff fills cracks wonderfully. It's got, uh, it, I do uh, some tests here, you know, between primed areas and unprimed areas, and it did a great job. Because of the drying time so quick, it actually blocked the stains on, on this wood here. Uh, I would definitely not just go at it on every project without uh, doing a bleeding test first with primer. But on this stuff, because of its uh, quick drying time, it kind of snap dried and locked those stains in there, which is really good. Also, uh, we have a bunch of rusty nails on this project as well too, and there is no bleed through in that. Typically, when a paint takes a little time to dry over a course of you know, 10, 10 minutes, half an hour, that rust will come through and you'll see those little nicotine stains, and it does a great job with that. Um, so again, like I said today, data plus feelings. It works very well. The data is 61 degrees right now, perfectly still beautiful morning here in Minnesota. Dew point is 53. We're getting dangerously close because when that dew point and that temperature meet, that's when the dew falls and lands on everything. So right now what we're getting on a day like today is 61 degrees and it's going to rise to about 81 degrees. Ideal. You can start very early in the morning because the dew has already basically risen. There's a little dew on the grass, but on any of the substrate, the dew has already risen like that because it doesn't get on there very thick. Now, Typically, uh, and this is, you see this in some data sheets, but it's also my experience, is that always best to have like a five degree Fahrenheit gap in dew point and painting, uh, and, and, and excuse me, dew point and exterior temperature. And you want that to be widening. So what you don't want that to happen is a five degree gap. It's uh, the dew point is 50, it's 55 right now, and the temperature is falling because guess what's gonna happen? That dew is gonna fall and it's gonna just rest on everything. So today is a perfect thing. We got about an eight degree gap of dew point 
and the temperature is going to rise. Ideal conditions for this, but it allows you to kind of do the, 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 you know, the early mornings and the later evenings and stuff. And uh, the moisture resistance is just absolutely wonderful. Because sometimes you can do everything right with an exterior paint. You can put it on there, and if the dew falls at night, sometimes it'll mark up that paint. And some people think that's surfactant leaching, but a lot of the time it's just heavy moisture that that paint hasn't fully cured yet, or it's cured but not all the way and then you get some moisture markings which is completely different that's just an aesthetic problem a surfactant leaching is when the paint takes so long to dry that the chemicals actually I shouldn't say chemicals the things that make up paint actually separate and it's a surfactant is actually a chemical soap that's why when you try to wash it off it suds up and stuff like that so all right demo i'm not going to stand here and talk about this thing the whole time let's put some on you can see obviously my little demo patch right here this is just a brush thing right here. It took 30 seconds to do. It fills <laughs> the pores. I can't stress this enough. This is something, I, I'm always interested in the things that you can't find in the technical data sheet and the literature. Um, yes, the paint says it's smooth, it covers well, it fills well. It does not give credit to how well this paint fills uh, like that. It, it filled those pores so easily, which is interesting because I don't want to call it a thin paint, but it's not, as, it's not as thick and robust as like a duration. It glides on super easy. It gives you a nice thick coat, but it also fills like that. So we'll do a little. I like to get those edges first. So it always feels like, you know, you always give something up when you do different paints. And this one, it really feels like it's thick, it's robust, it's filling. It's forming a nice big coating on there. You can see even the nail holes with just a minimal effort. It fills all those nail holes really, really well, which you want. Especially the lips of old boards like that. I, I, it's, I know this isn't going to come across the camera very well, and I know you're not going to find it in the data sheets, but this paint is an absolute pleasure uh, to put on. It is so smooth. So smooth. Okay, so typically uh, when we do an exterior, um, you really want to fill the pores. That's the goal. If you have hardy board with no open pores that has a intact coating and you're only changing uh, the color on the top of it, you can just spray and no back brush, no back roll. But typically we have houses that are not that. Uh, any wood house typically by the time we get it has some open pores, some gray wood, which we would wash or sand if it's uh, above 1978. And then uh, typically we'd have to go at least one coat of paint, back brush, back roll to fill the pores. And if the pores are filled, then you can just spray another coat over the top of it. If the pores aren't filled, then you still got a back brush and back roll. A lot of times old homes like this, uh, this siding is from the 1880s. Insanely beautiful stuff that has intact stuff. Uh, Troy, yeah, absolutely. So again, benefit of this thing is there's a tiny gap. Typically what we do in our company is... Um, anything a 16th inch or, uh, or smaller um, will fill with paint. Paint is a better filler uh, and, and sort of binder than caulk is in a lot of joints. Uh, it forms a more cohesive thing. Caulk will fail. It's flexible. It's weird, stuff like that. It's fine. You have to use it. But especially in gaps like this, in, in old historic restorations, I always prefer to fill everything first with primer and top coat, and then only the things like an eighth inch or a quarter inch bigger, then you fill with caulking. So um, that's a general idea. I have had much, much better results in my life when I was able to get a result like that with paint than with caulking. Oh, no, we have to, we have to all use it there. So, uh, Troy, this is Sherwin-Williams Latitude. It's up in the show notes here. So I'll give you a quick demo on the spray, too, because it is, uh, I'm not going to stand here and just talk about paint all day. Let's actually paint something. It's cool, so... <laughs>
Okay, and it looks awesome. Now, there's only a couple little areas. This stuff, this stuff works itself into the pores insanely well, but typically you're not gonna get as good a coverage as when you man manually manipulate it with a brush too, so. Yeah, see those nice, especially when you have nail holes and stuff like this, I just can't stress how smooth and how well this paint feels. Typically when you have a paint, when we used to add a whole bunch of extenders and additives and things like that, it would thin the paint, it wouldn't cover as well, and it wouldn't fill in all those kind of uh, holes and stuff like that. This stuff, it feels like, you know, from my experience with using it, is that you still get that benefit of it going on smooth, but it'll take up like nail holes and things like that, like these here, with minimal effort. Not hold right there. Nail hole again. Nail hole. Nail hole. Look at that. And just passing over it even lightly with a brush, it does an amazing job at filling that stuff. So, <clears throat> I wish, I wish the tactile feel of this paint would come across over this stuff. I know it looks smooth and all that stuff, but the rate at which it fills <laughs> is just amazing. And it is super satisfying to use. There are other paints where certainly you can put them on there, it will get the same result, but this is efficient. It's a beautiful, wonderful paint to use. And again, you overlay data with feelings. The, the data is, yes, it'll do all the moisture resistance things, it'll work in the temperatures, it'll resist the dirt, it'll extend your season, the feelings is there's a lot of paints that are really good that may not be as fun to use. This is a paint that is very fun to use. <laughs> the way it goes on, and you and you craftspeople and master craftspeople will know exactly what I mean. Some paints just feel satisfying to put on, and this is one of them here. And you can see, you know, 140-year-old siding right here, uh, nice and filled, ready to go. One thing, and I'll say this, and then we'll start talking about the Pennsylvania uh, recap here. One thing I'll say that I don't hear people talk about exterior coatings and, and the process of it a lot is what actually makes a good exterior paint or paint job. Number one, if you create a 100, now listen, nobody's perfect, right? 100% is probably not possible. If you can create a 100% perfect membrane around a house and not let any moisture or bugs or anything else in, I believe that is probably the finest uh, sort of exterior paint job you can do. And that means like, yes, 140 year old wood is going to move, even though it is old growth and all that other stuff. But if you can bridge the gap under every lip, if you can make a cohesive coating through there, it'll probably crack, it'll probably move. But if all the pores are filled, that is a nice membrane on a house. Nothing's gonna get behind it and it'll last the longest. So. It's, it's the thing of, yeah, we can use this certain paint, this certain sprayer, this certain brush, we can do a certain color and all this other stuff, but I don't hear people talk a, a lot about the actual, what makes an exterior paint good. And it's not a super thick coating, it is an effective coating. Four wet mills will be effective with this stuff. You can over apply if you want, you can under apply if you want, but to get the true benefit of a paint like this, about four wet mills, it'll dry to 1.4, give or take, and then you put a second coat on. So, all right, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's go through some. Oh, thanks, everybody. Uh, yeah, Sherwin-Williams Latitude. We got the can right here, and we got it up in the notes. Uh, thanks a lot. I really do appreciate it, everybody. Suzanne, yes, uh, you said, wow, it feels that way as well, too. Uh, Ryan Killen, this is flat. Uh, typically, we like to use flat exterior paint, uh, especially the stuff. Our go-to is the, the high-end offerings from Sherwin-Williams. Again, what you won't find in the technical data sheet with all this stuff is even the flat has this beautiful like <laughs> like sheen to it. It's there's no shine, but it just looks like a really good coating and it's just got a little something to it. It's not an eggshell or a mat or a satin or whatever else. It's just got something. It's not dead flat and I love that look. Holly, thank you so much. Uh, Aid, thank you so much for watching from Cameroon. Cameron, I love that stuff uh, from people all over the world. So uh, let's see. Troy, 
What about high heat like Florida and high humidity? Yes. So this paint is tailor-made for that stuff. Um, obviously, you guys are probably not going to suffer from that 35 to 45. Although, I did take my family on a vacation there. You guys will probably remember the year. We went down to a little island in Florida, and all it got so cold, the uh, oranges froze off the trees that year. So the island was interesting at that time of the year. Uh, but yes, high heat, high humidity. Uh, it goes up to 120. It'll deal with uh, the high humidity very well. It's got that early resistance within that first 30 minutes to moisture. So if you can get that uh, coating to, to dry off like that, it'll resist a lot of those weird moisture things. And uh, like I was saying here, it's a uh, it's a very humid still day here. This stuff is drying awesomely in that it is still, there's no breeze coming. And I am very amazed at how well this stuff dries in those conditions. Uh, I've not experienced that with a lot of other paints. So Beach House, how's it going? Just tuned in. But this paint is recommended only on a specific type of exterior. No, absolutely not. So you can use this on metal, stucco, tin, um hardy board lp wood everything this is this is a this is a standard all around superior high end exterior paint and but it just has that added benefit of the uh being able to work in uh in high or low temps and the moisture resistance too and i would say if you guys have it even if this is like a standard 78 degree day low humidity all that other stuff this paint is a joy to put on. It is like grease lightning. So I would say just try it out. It's, it's a really, really cool product. Anthony, oh yeah, if you've been curious, go get some. It's awesome stuff. Do you notice coverage difference between that and the different sheens? So this comes in uh, everything up to gloss. Uh, no, uh, I, we usually don't use anything more than flat. Once in a while, we'll use a satin, give or take. But this is a thick, robust, really good to put on paint but also it, it just it's like lubricated it just goes on insanely well it applies very easily so obviously if you're going to have a drastic color change if we were going to deep red or something uh yeah you're probably going to have to maybe even uh do a, a prime coat on the house or make sure you're very diligent with your two coat process that you coat it 100 percent, work it in and then give it enough time to dry and do that but no i haven't experienced that so uh, Troy, yeah, good luck. Parker Johnson, how's it going, man? Good to see you. All right, folks, let's talk about Pennsylvania. So I blew in in the middle of the night last night. We had a whole bunch of flight delays, and uh, but today was such a good day, uh, and this time of the day is such a good day. I wanted to make sure that we still got uh, Sherwin-Williams Latitude in there. Um, so yesterday, I was in Pennsylvania to see my good friend, Corey Leister. She owns a company called Inspired by You. I mean, she's basically one of the flagship cabinet finishers refinishers uh in the country um very interesting if you don't know her she also owns a sort of uh a company called inspired by university where she gathers some of the some of the big minds in our industry brings them to her training and learning facility and then gathers other people there and we share knowledge back and forth so that's what we did yesterday um we did master's classes um oh also if you don't know this about corey um, I think I asked her what the count was, but she has um, cabinet finishing and refinishing forums. Uh, 65,000 people, probably more than that at this point. But uh, I am a moderator of one of them, and I get a great inside look at all the bright minds in the industry. And these people are rigorous. Uh, they have guides. They share all their knowledge. It is one of the most robust, rigorous groups that you can ever be a part of if you have any questions about this stuff. And they are at the cutting edge of what's good and best about the coatings industry. So all the crazy stuff you hear about, the imported Italian 1K, 2Ks, the extenders, the crosslinkers, the this and that, it's all in there uh, And if you're interested. And also there's a whole bunch of other high-end sort of domestics and, and, uh, and stuff like that as well. So I would urge you guys to check out those. Yesterday we gathered up a whole bunch of bright minds from the industry and um, we talked first in the morning about basic business professionalization, which again, I keep saying sounds dry, but it's, it's sort of the key, the entrance fee to running a real business. And all of the things that people ask me about, you know, the scheduling, what do you charge for this? How do you find good people? Um, how much money should you be making? All this other things, all these basic questions that we all have about business are all, I mean, if I'm being honest, are all answerable and answered if you basically professionalize your business. And what I go through is somewhere between like a, a eight and 10 step process where I just detail what I've done over the years uh, to bring professionalization to my business, which is basically non-existent uh, in the trades largely. Uh, and not a good or bad, it's just we're all out there working, but 
If you complain about any of those things, scheduling, what to charge for this, finding help, basic internal processes, problems with coatings, all that stuff answered by being a professional business, legitimately. So we talked about that deep in the morning. There was so much discussion. We went about an hour over. We worked right through lunch. We did a live Q&A session. Uh, and then in the afternoon, uh, Corey requested that we do my master's class on industry myths. So I went through a whole bunch of uh, data and, and experience that I have over the years. Uh, I made a slide for every time that I have a huge data set that points to something that I know to be true that maybe that none of the rest of the industry knows to be true or something that it's a knee-jerk reaction in the industry. Everybody believes it and in my business I found something else to be true and I basically use the experience and the data and use the group as a sounding board to actually see if this stuff is right or not and uh, we go deep 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 into data. Uh, statistical data from the government, stats and data from my business, all this other stuff and it is an absolute blast. So. I am very blessed that Corey trusted me with that sort of thing. Uh, she is the great connector of people in this industry, and I'm, uh, I'm very proud to uh, serve on a committee with her and Jason Paris and a couple other great people from the industry. We're actually working on an initiative right now to present a product to the industry, a thing, a service, for anyone who wants a boot camp in professionalizing their business. So we're trying to take best practices from people who have done this, done this well, all the coaches, all the consultants, all the people who have made specific, rigorous, insanely good uh, coaching products for their people to coach them from one to 10 to 20 to 30 employees. We're actually combining all these big brains and the great connector Corey, the Elon Musk of the industry, Jason Paris, and all these wonderful coaches and consultants that we have to form something to help through the PCA. So. Look forward to that, folks, as we get a little bit further down the road here. But it is a big initiative, and we are all pouring all our brain power into it. And if you ever had any of those questions, any of those friction points, those scheduling, estimating, uh, what types of codings and processes, finding good people, all of the answers to those lie at the end of professionalization. So I want to say thank you to Sherwin-Williams for being an insanely good partner in my business. Um, a lot of times people say, how do you pick a coding? How do you pick a process? And yes, you want the best. Pretty easy to find that stuff there. They got a good track record. But never forget availability and relationship as well. Um, at the size of business we are, we need a partner like Sherwin in order to grow our business. They have an insanely robust uh, logistics system where we get a couple huge shipments of paint and supplies and stuff to our shop every week to keep our people moving. What we're not doing is one and twos here driving all over the place looking for stuff. They're a partner. They take care of us. They also work with us on price. They work with us on coding selections. Uh, we had a huge historic restoration where they're doing drawdowns for us. They are legitimately a partner. And what I'm interested in is not just price. Obviously, we want to we want to save money on, on the price of paint, but never forget relationship. I have formed a great relationship with my rep over the last bunch of years, and my business has benefited from it. So again, yes, price of a gallon of paint is easy to cling to. All paint, all good paint is expensive. You're not going to ever find cheap and free paint that's super, super good. You have to remember that there's something more to it than just that. You want to give your clients the best possible product, the best possible service, but if you can form some great relationships in between, I would urge you to do that because honestly, it has helped my business in more ways than I can ever explain. So I want to thank Sherwin for being a great partner. I want to thank the PCA for sharing these core values and putting it out there. And I'm going to try to end this before I have to sneeze. So thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll monitor this for any questions you have. The sneeze is coming and uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll interact later. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you later.